Okay, and recording is in progress. And we do plan to make this recording available after the webinar for a limited period. Um, I, as people log on, I will be pausing to help mute their, their microphones, otherwise we'll start getting feedback. First, I wanted to introduce folks. Um, my name is Mark Lefebvre, and I am a Project Wild Manager with the Association of Fish and Wildlife Agencies. And also helping co-pilot this is Kelly Reynolds. Um, and so we'll be presenting on uh, the agenda today. Um, I'm also going to show you a picture that will give you a better idea of the world of growing up wild and all of the people behind it, and that is what I refer to as the host page in the front of the Growing Up Wild Guide. Uh, this is the most updated version, and this will be one of the changes that you see in the next printing of Growing Up Wild that will start shipping out sometime in 2019 after the current stock is used up. There's a few differences, but this is one of the main differences is just a reformatting of this of the host page. Um, it's divided into two main categories. At the top, uh, we have members of the Association of Fish and Wildlife Agencies, many of those who are hosts for the Growing Up Wild program, as well as then other Growing Up Wild hosting organizations, including many of the Growing Up Wild training partners. So when you see this page, the reason why it was reformatted was to be, um, to follow the same format as other Project Wild publications but the information is still the same. This, um, this cover photo, a little bit different than the one you saw a minute ago, this is what the cover of Growing Up Wild will soon look like. Um, if you place an order in 2019, this is what the cover will look like. It's identical to the current cover. Um, at the bottom left of the screen, you can see the logo is different. And hold on just a moment, I'm gonna mute a few more folks here. Um, there, so we don't get too much feedback. During this webinar, if anyone uh, wants to talk, you're welcome to use the um, hand raising function or you can type into the chat window and um, Kelly and I will tag team trying to monitor the chatting, the chat box so we can answer questions or turn on your microphones or actually I think only I can turn on your microphone. <clears throat> okay, so again, one difference is the host page. This is the second difference. The cover looks a little bit different. Down at the bottom left side of the screen, um, instead of the Project Wild logo, we now have a statement that Growing Up Wild is a Project Wild program of the Association of Fish and Wildlife Agencies. We're trying to capture something that's a little more in the style of the guide rather than having a formal logo such as the AFWA Project Wild logo. <clears throat> and then the last noticeable change is on page 64, and this is the, page, the last of the color section of the guide, the, the pages that are printed in color. So it's, it's towards the middle of the guide. Um, this, is the, this is a new graphic um, about Children's Outdoor Bill of Rights. So many of you know that the Outdoor Bill of Rights uh, is an idea that was implemented in many states, uh, sometimes at the city level, or sometimes organizations implemented their own Children's Outdoor Bill of Rights. One of the states that did that uh, early in the effort was um, Maryland Department of Natural Resources. And this is their graphic um, that corresponds with their formal statement about making sure children, uh, making sure people know that children have rights about getting outdoors. And so we, we wanted to put a sample of a Children's Outdoor Bill of Rights into the back of the Growing Up Wild Guide to help people better understand this kind of movement and connect with organizations in their area. Um, there's also a reference to this example in the front of the guide 
Uh, so hopefully that will steer some people back here. But down the road in 2019 and beyond, you may want to, um, during your, your trainings, uh, steer people towards this page. Um, this is the major content difference uh, in the guide, this half page section. So, you know, it's possible you may have trainings where some people have the older version and some people have the, the more recent printing with this graphic in it. Um, I don't think that will cause too much heartache for most people because it's the only content difference really. Um, but you could, if you like, print out this uh, graphic or better yet, um, a outdoor bill of rights that's for your area or your state or your city. And you can find those by searching online. All right, next up, um, I wanted to discuss possible plans for reformatting the Growing Up Wild Guide. Many of you will remember discussion over the last several months about possibly reducing or changing the dimensions of the Growing Up Wild Guide from the 11 by 17 large format to a more traditional for size and shape. And of course, we've been hearing that this would be a preference of many people um, since Growing Up Wild was launched in 2009, and we continued to consider it, um, and the, you know, getting a better sense for um, what coordinators, training partners, facilitators, and educators would like is uh, one step we took recently through this Survey Monkey link. And this link is still open for one more day, so if anyone still wants to participate in completing the survey, uh, go ahead, and Kelly, if you're able to capture that URL and paste it into the chat box, uh, perhaps it'll help people if they do want to, if they do want to take the survey. But basically, the survey, it's very short. It, it asks the question, should the Growing Up Wild Guide be reformatted from the current dimensions of 17 inches by 11 by a quarter inch thick to the more conventional eight and a half by 11 size, which would then make it a half an inch thick. And our results, um, so not quite 70% uh, agree that that's, we should do that. Um, over 20% neutral and another maybe 12, 13% not sure. I filtered these results out to see what educators say who replied uh, about their role with Growing Up Wild and those who identified themselves as educators who implement Growing Up Wild activities with children, they agreed even more with that. So I would say it's, this indicates that more people in the field using the guide with children would like to see that. So this is one of the major considerations for us in changing the format, not the only one, there's, there's others, um, cost and um, there's trade-offs too, as many people pointed out in the comment section of the survey. Um, many people still feel like the larger size is better. So we're, we're still looking at that and um, it may be that another year, year and a half down the road, we may reformat it. So we'll keep you posted on that. <clears throat> okay, uh, now I'm gonna turn it over to Kelly. Um, who's going to talk about websites. And Kelly, I'm gonna, I think you're unmuted. Yes. Okay. So I'm gonna mute myself and take it away. Okay. Um, so our websites, as many of you know, basically we kind of pulled the plug on our old uh, websites that um, had been administered by CEE and then we updated the content uh, to say AFWA, but AFWA got a new website earlier this year, and as part of that launch, we have been moving our content over, and as you are at least partially aware, there was a lot, you know, that's our Project Wild, all those pages, the Growing Up Wild pages, the Aquatic Wild pages, the Flying Wild pages, and all the resources that go with the activities, um, plus additional resources like correlations and reprint request forms and all that good stuff. So um, the update is that some of the things are there and not everything is there yet. Um, so this is a snapshot of what is there. 
Um, so the URLs, there are three URLs basically that will take you to our current Growing Up Wild landing page. So all of the ones that were printed on the guides beforehand, like those top two you see there, pwgrowingupwild.org and projectwild.org slash growingupwild.htm, those will direct you to our current website, to the right place. Um, and then the one that you see beneath that um, is the actual URL that, that it's being redirected to that's housed at fishwildlife.org. Um, so all of those old, old URLs are good and will get you to the right place. This slide is just kind of what you see when you get there. And as you can tell, it's kind of um, bare bones right now. So we do plan to add photos and the logos and all of that good stuff. Um, but our kind of our priority has been getting all the activity resources up there because that's what um, educators need the most immediately. So um, Mark, if you'll click the next slide, just point out that um, resources, that's where you'll click once you go to that Growing Up Wild landing page. And then you can go to the next slide. And it's going to take you here where all of the activities are listed and hyperlinked. Um, and then so you just pick which activity you're doing, for example, in a workshop. Mark, you can click again. So for example, if we click Fishing Fun, then go ahead and go to the next slide. Okay, so this is what every activity basically has a page like this. It's got the title at the top. It's got the little description. Children engage in a dramatic play fishing game and learn about fish. And then it has the copy me pages, the home connections card, um, any relevant websites that are listed in that blue bar on the activity. And then all of those show me wildlife uh, links that connect to that activity. So that's all in one place for each activity. Um, so that's what's there right now. All of the activities have been populated. Those, those pages have been. Um, but there's a lot more that we need to add, both pertaining to Growing Up Wild and pertaining to the other programs as well. So that's just kind of a look at where we are. And we appreciate your patience as we try to make it, um, you know, everything that needs to be there findable and usable and um, look good in the process. So if you have any questions, if there's anything you, specific you need, always just give us a call or an email. Um, you can get in touch with me and I will get you what you need. And you can click to the next slide, Mark. Okay, so this I Wonder Wild is a hashtag. I Wonder Wild is a social media campaign that we're doing right now. We just launched, this was Elena's idea, and I, it's a lot of fun. And basically we're encouraging people to uh, submit questions about North American wildlife. It can be kids, students, um, families, facilitators even. <laughs> but we're trying to and just engage people with all things wild. So they'll just write a question, post it on they can post it on their Twitter account or Instagram or Facebook. They can post it on our page. They can email it to us. But if they do it on social media, all they have to do is include that hashtag, I wonder wild, and that's how we'll find those questions. And then we're working with some of you and some of our other folks not on this call to have um, staff at agencies and organizations answer the questions. And so we'll pick a question once a week and then post a video response of somebody um, answering that question. So Mark, if you wanna click that video, I think we can play it. Oh, you have to unmute yourself. I'm gonna mute myself. Oh, well. I don't know if other folks can hear it, but I can't hear it. But there's a catchy little tune in the background and it makes you want to post your questions. There it is. Nice. So that link is currently available. It's on our website and it's on our Facebook page. 
feel free to share it with others. We're running this program, I think October 15th was when we started to November 16th. So basically just a month um, and definitely share it with anyone that's appropriate. All right, next slide. Okay, so I wanted to um, give an update about events in which um, Growing Up Wild is having a presence. Um, starting with the World of Wonders Conference. World of Wonders Conference is a conference that is um, about early childhood environmental education. And it is spearheaded, among others, by the folks at NAAAE with the Natural Start Program um, and others. And I had the good fortune of attending and presenting um, this past August, it was in Chicago, and Megan, Megan Bo, who was on this call, hi Megan, uh, we both presented together and exhibited, and it was really a great experience. Um, I don't remember how many folks were there, but I'm thinking it was over 400. Um, Megan, if you happen to know that, feel free to type it in. Um, but it was um, such a great audience to connect with and learn about what's going on in early childhood environmental education. Uh, we may not be, that is, the office staff may not be able to attend the next one uh, at the end of July, early August 2019, but I wanted to mention it in case anyone else uh, thinks they might want to attend. It's going to be in Manchester, New Hampshire, and I've put in the URL. This URL will, um, will get you information about that event as well as other early childhood environmental education news through NAAAE. Another event that we're hoping to get to in 2019 is the National Head Start Association Conference. Um, this is a really significant conference that um, we were much more active with in the earlier days of Growing Up Wild because of the number of early childhood facilities, educators, and children and families that are connected to the Head Start program and Head Start funding. Um, so we would like to reinvigorate that interest among those organizations and those people. Um, and we encourage you all to try to follow what is going on with organizations that receive Head Start funding in your area, particularly early childhood centers and their staff and their trainers. Um, so we'll be promoting Growing Up Wild and our hope is that as people go home from that conference, they will be contacting you all about how to get training. The third event is our own Project Wild Coordinators Conference. Um, it's going to be uh, starting June 23rd in 2019, this year in Montana at the Chico Hot Springs Resort. Um, we'll be within striking distance of Yellowstone, among other places where one of the field trips will be. And there will be content at the Project Wild Conference on Growing Up Wild. Uh, the Project Wild Conference is not only for Project Wild coordinators, although historically that's primarily who attends. We, we also encourage others, particularly facilitators, Project Wild facilitators, Growing Up Wild facilitators, to attend. Uh, we will have registration options. So for example, a facilitator or Growing Up Wild training partner might choose to attend um, on the Tuesday, Wednesday, and the final day, the Thursday, so that two and a half day period, um, for example, they can pay a, a bit of a reduced rate rather than the full registration, which would start on a Sunday evening and then go through, it would go through uh, Thursday. Um, so if you go to the Project Wild landing page at fishwildlife.org, um, you can find your way to more information about uh, the Project Wild Conference. And of course, um, Kelly, Elaine, and I are very happy to field any questions you have about that also. Kelly, it looks like you're about to say something. Go ahead. How did you know? <laughs> um, yes, and actually we don't have the conference information online yet. Um, we're going to probably, registration will open in January, and we're going to try to push kind of the first initial information out to folks in November, including 
the pricing and the request for proposals and that sort of thing. So soon, soon it will be there. Great, all right, thanks Kelly. Okay, um, Kelly, I'm gonna turn it back over to you again to discuss annual reporting. Yes, okay, thanks Mark. So, as you all know, every year we collect an annual report form from you and we've been trying to find the best way to do that. Um, it seems in this day and age, there might be something better than paper and pencil that would help us kind of analyze the data more quickly. Um, so we did SurveyMonkey one year and that was kind of cumbersome. And then last year we tried to do a fillable PDF, but that was wonky. Um, so Kiki had the idea to do an Excel spreadsheet and she converted the Word document into an Excel spreadsheet. So thank you, Kiki. <laughs> and what I have the screenshot of here is um, part of that Excel spreadsheet. So we're hoping that this will be a very easy way for you to just type in your numbers and your answers to the open-ended questions and then send that back to us and then we can compile all of that into tabs into a master Excel spreadsheet that will help us get a handle on, you know, training numbers and trends in um, the Growing Up State Growing Up Wild programs and training partners. So that will be coming we'll probably send it to you in January and then have a deadline maybe in February sometime. So just kind of letting you know that's going to be on the on the horizon and we are trying to find the, mo the most painless way to do that. So stay tuned for that. So we're approaching the end of this brief webinar and of course um, we will be turning it over to questions and answers here in a bit, but I, before we finish the present, the, um, the slideshow, the last one here is I wanted to let you know about some thoughts about future Growing Up Wild webinars and start to get some of your thoughts. Uh, we, this is the first webinar that was dedicated to Growing Up Wild, and we're guessing it would be helpful to do more down the road. Um, how frequently, we're not sure yet. We'd like your opinion. For example, would it be once a quarter? Um, twice a year um, and also topics that you might be interested in we'd like to know about it so I'd like to start that discussion now um, if you'd like to either type in ideas for future webinars let's actually let's start with the frequency why don't you type in um, if you think growing up wild webinars will be helpful to you how frequently every quarter, every six months, or other. And in a moment, um, I'm going to ask the question and allow you time to type in topics. And if it's easier to, to open this up to, um, to discussion about Growing Up Wild webinars, um, feel free to use the raise your hand function Okay, so I'm seeing quarterly, about four people so far have said that, maybe twice a year was one response, twice a year is another one, quarterly. Okay, and we will take a closer look at these later. Um, so thank you for your replies, a lot of quarterlies there. Um, now about topics, off the bat, are there any topics that come to mind you would like us to prepare for down the road? They might be specific to the Growing Up Wild program or to early childhood environmental education in general. Sometimes uh, we're able to find guest speakers on a particular topic. I'm not making any promises, but we certainly want to know your preferences. Okay, and Anita, I see your comment that you, you'll check in with Florida Wild Wild Ones. Thank you. So keep those comments flowing. And if you think of some later, of course, let us know if more come to mind. All right. So at that, um, are there any other departing thoughts, 
more parting thoughts, questions in general about growing up wild. Anything you'd like to ask us now before we sign off? And I think I've confused the issue because people are still typing in topics for future webinars. So if you do have a question that you'd like to ask now, if you could preface your, your comment in the chat box with the word question, then um, Billy yeah. and I will know to, uh, to address that. Andrea asked, how do we order the full books? And I am guessing, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Andrea, that you mean just how do you order the Growing Up Wild guide? And we do have a order form. Okay, yes. Um, we do have a, we have a public order form and a coordinator order form and a Growing Up Wild training partner order form and others. But I can email that to you. Um, and that will, the, we, we have an order form per fiscal year. Um, so we have one that will be good through the end of this year, and then it'll change in 2019. We, do, we don't anticipate the cost of the guide changing. Um, we just have one for every fiscal year to help us keep that all straight. Um, so I'll send that to you. And that is something, thank you for putting your email address. That is something that uh, we will have on the website. We're just trying to figure out where exactly to house um, things for growing up wild training partners. You'll remember that there was like a login um, and that's where the order form was before. So we're again doing some of the kind of shifting and growing pains of moving over. So I will email that to you and then we will send it out. So when we do the 2019 order form, we'll send that out to all the growing up wild training partners and we'll send the coordinator one out to all the state coordinators. So there you go. And thank you guys for sending, for keeping those topics coming. And um, if something occurs to you right after we end the call, you can always email it to Mark or myself as well. Mark, you are muted still. <laughs> I keep. Thanks, Kelly. Um, I was just saying it's it's been a um, a short but sweet webinar. Uh, I think that we're at a good stopping point. Um, so at that, we're going to say goodbye and thank you all for attending. I will be sending out a recording link to you and others as well. Kelly, anything else? That's it. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.